Hello, my name is Matthew Harfey. I'm the author of the Benicia Chronicles series of books set in the early medieval period, which is commonly known as the Dark Ages. The series starts with the Serpent Sword, um, and right now I'm ready to release in July the the newest one. The latest one is book eight in the series is For Lord and Land. Now the series is set in seventh century Northumberland, um, Northumbria, and um, and they travel to other places. But in this book, um, in For Lord and Land, the the hero Beobrand. Um, faces his um, usual struggles um, of, of intrigue and, and warfare um, which have been caused by by the king that he serves Oswy and um, Northumbria is gripped in a civil war um, from the north um, the northern kingdom of Benicia um, which is ruled by Oswy Beobrand's king and the southern kingdom of Deira um, and they are locked in a in a vicious civil war um, Beobrand finds himself Im immersed in that conflict, um, obviously, and possibly if you read some of the earlier series, you'll know that he's been involved um, in, in why it takes place as well. And um, also Canaan, his uh, his Welsh um, henchman or his si his sidekick, um, his trusted warrior friend Canaan is um, involved in his own side quest traveling into the um, far reaches uh, of the western um, side of, of the, the northern part of, of what is nowadays England, which was then Reged, which um, is Cumbria, and the Lake District, and that area. Um, on a, he's got a quest of his own when uh, a, character, um, a character from a past, from his past, comes back and asks him for help. And um, both are tested to the limits, and um, we'll have to see who survives, if everybody survives at the end, or if somebody is sacrificed for lord and land by the end of the book. So that's it. Go out and buy it. And if you haven't read the others in the series, go and buy them too. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is John Owen Theobald. I am a novelist. Uh, I write historical fiction. I have a trilogy of books published by Head of Zeus called the Raven Master Trilogy, which are set uh, during the Second World War in the Tower of London. Um, my new trilogy, the forthcoming trilogy of books, uh, is set in the much more distant past of about 6000 BC as a Stone Age story. Um, the first book is called The Drowned Land. It comes out on September the 2nd from Head of Zeus. And it takes place in this area that we've come to start calling the um, Atlantis of the North Sea. It's this area called Doggerland, um, which used to be the land bridge that connected Europe and the UK. Um, it was gradually sinking due to rising sea levels and climate change, and then was very dramatically wiped out by this giant tsunami. Um, spoiler alert. Uh, and so my story takes place in the last days of this world before the tsunami comes. And the conflict that has risen from the harsh conditions of this world and the lack of food and the sort of uh, a real divide between the sort of shaman class of people who believe in a magical uh, outlook and the warriors who sort of blame and resent the shamans and, and think perhaps they're responsible for what has happened. And so it's essentially an, an apocalyptic novel um, and sort of asking questions about whether or not these people can put their differences aside and, and try to figure out a solution to this or whether or not they're just going to uh, go down fighting um, when the wave closes over them. And uh, yeah, so that's The Drowned Land. It comes out September the 2nd from Head of Zeus. And uh, yeah, it's very nice to meet you. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. I was just lounging in this pool, enjoying a delicious cold beverage, and thinking how excited I am for the release of my new book. Oh, how rude. I haven't introduced myself. 
My name is Brian Stavely, and when I'm not lounging in pools that don't belong to me, drinking beers that don't belong to me, I write epic fantasy. My first book was The Emperor's Blades. It came out in 2013. It was the beginning of a trilogy that followed three adult children of a murdered emperor, a monk, a special forces soldier, and a politician, as they attempted to unravel the millennia-old conspiracy that led to the death of their father. My newest book, The Empire's Ruin, follows on in that same world. There's some of the same characters and some new characters, a whole new continent to explore, monsters twisted by an ancient magic, an ancient race coming back to life, a soldier traumatized by the death of her team, a monk turned con man, a priest of the goddess of love forced to fight to the death in the arena. It's titled The Empire's Ruin, and again, it comes out July 6th. I hope you'll check it out. In the meantime, I'll be here enjoying this beverage. Thanks for listening. Hello, and welcome to Writing Fighting. That's not what we're doing today. Uh, actually, hi, Ed. Hi, Will. Uh, I'm representing my own book. So I'm here to talk to you about Artifact Space. Oh. No, I'm not. Whoa, it's a busy time. Uh, I'm here to talk to you about Hawkwood Sword. Hawkwood Sword comes out July 8th. Uh, it's a bit of a political thriller set in late 14th century Italy, England, all over the place, really. Unexplored episodes of the Hundred Years' War, a murder mystery involving an English prince that really happened. Uh, the Milanese, beautiful wo women, romantic locations, good wine, and chivalry. It's William Gold, book five. Give it a read. And while I have you here, let me talk about one more thing. It's sort of like a writing a fighting episode. Uh, this is an all steel rondel dagger. And I modeled Descharny's dagger, which is a theme that sort of represents a physical aspect of chivalry throughout all of the William Gold novels. And Todd is making a beautiful, can I call it a replica of a, an item I made up? Todd is making Descharny's dagger, uh, Todd of Todd's stuff. And we're gonna give it away next week. So stay tuned. Uh, I'm sure Ed would like to win it. Maybe Will would like to win it. Anyway, thank you guys for this opportunity. See you soon. Hi, my name is Shelley Parker Chan, and thanks for having me on the Brothers Gwyn YouTube channel. I have a new book coming out from Tor in July. It's called She Who Became the Sun, and it's a queer reimagining of the rise to power of the founding emperor of the Ming Dynasty. So in the 14th century, the Mongols had conquered China and they were ruling with an iron fist. And along comes this guy. His name is Zhu Yuanzhang. And he was a peasant, he was a nobody. And I don't think he particularly cared about the fate of the Chinese people. He was literally just some guy who woke up and said, you know what, I think I'm destined for greatness. And he rose from being a peasant to a monk, to being the commander of a rebel army. And then he kicked the Mongols out of China and he made himself the emperor, which has to be one of the most astounding rises in human history. And I thought it'd be interesting if we took this guy of such outrageous ambition and made him someone who wasn't born a man. You know, how would that be different? So this is a story of a boy who's given a great fate and a girl who steals it. It's modeled on Chinese historical films and TV dramas. And if you know those genres, they are super fun that are full of big emotions and these big, beautiful settings. There's love and tragedy and betrayal and stabbing. So that's what I tried to do. This is an escapist fantasy, but I hope you find something serious in it as well about gender and fate. I really hope you enjoy it.
Hi, I'm Simon Turney. I'm a historian and a writer of historical fiction. I'm best known for my work based in the Roman Empire, but today I'm going to talk about something slightly different. I'm going to talk about Vikings. Uh, I'm a Yorkshireman, and Yorkshire lies in that area of the UK that was solidly Viking. Our area, our village names, our town names are still inflected with Viking words. I live not far from uh, the great centre at Jorvik, uh, with its annual Viking festival. And a lot of our churches have Viking hogsback burial stones and Viking Christian uh, Viking crosses in them. So I've always been fascinated with Vikings. They resound in my local area. So a little about the book then. I have a new book out. It's the first in a series called The Walls of Odin and it's called Blood Feud. It's a little different to the Viking uh, novels you may have read before, which are set in the Dark Ages, the 7th, 8th, 9th century. They usually involve burning monasteries, uh, slaying monks, stealing silver galore, uh, Thor, Odin, Ragnarok, berserkers. This is slightly different. This is set in the 1040s. This is almost medieval. It's an era when Scandinavia is almost solidly Christian. Uh, at this point, Denmark has become Christian. The, uh, the Christianity has sort of leached into it through trade from its surrounding neighbours. Uh, Norway has been converted at the tip of a sword at its uh, own king's command. And the, uh, Sweden is going a similar way, though in Sweden there are still pockets of paganism. And our main character, Halfdan, is one of those pagans from the island of Gotland in southern Sweden. Now, as well as Halfdan, the story is also based heavily on one of the great sagas, the great Icelandic sagas, which is what we get most of our Viking legend from. These were written by Icelandic monks, often hundreds of years after the events they were supposed to, have, uh, supposed to record. The one that we're concerned with, the saga of Ingvar the Far Travelled, uh, has a certain corroborating evidence, though. Uh, all over Sweden, there are runestones, great markers for the dead, that uh, commemorate husbands, sons, fathers, brothers, who all went south with Ingvar the Far Travelled to fight the Serks and never came back. A great omen for them. Uh, so what we've got there is a saga which is highly uh, fictionalised, but with elements of truth. And because we're not talking here about burning monasteries in Northumbria, you've got a whole new area to explore. These are Swedish Vikings going east instead. We're exploring the lands of the Rus, who would give their name to Russia, the great deeper river with its rapids, the Svartahaf, the Black Sea, and the Caucasus, the kingdoms of Georgia, Armenia, uh, the civil war of King Bagrat of Georgia. This is the milieu into which Halfdan is going to be cast. Now Halfdan, as a character, is a young man from Gotland, a young pagan, a worshipper of Loki and Thor and Odin. And he watches his father cut down in the village square by uh, a Christian Jarl in the name of religion. And it sparks a, a blood feud, an oath that will take him from one side of the known world to the other, hunting this Jarl. In the Great Saga, you will meet dragons, you will meet giants, and you will meet the undead. I'm writing about the real world. We don't have dragons in the real world, so you're just going to have to read the book to find out what I do about that. So, uh, that's it. Halfdan, Ingvar, and Vikings to the end of the world. That's Blood Feud, and it's out this month. Thank you.